Hi, I'm Brad Fry, Music Supervisor here at Ava Technologies, here with some quick tips on how to edit and work with the music that you generate from the online music engine. Uh, I know we have people here from, you know, varying backgrounds and uh, degrees of experience when it comes to things like orchestration and arranging. And so uh, my goal here is to try to at least give you some ammunition of some things that you can do yourself to improve on the compositions that you generate. So going to jump in here and first play you a piece that I generated uh, with no edits made to it, just so you can hear the uh, raw output from Ava, and then we're going to start kind of hacking away at it. So uh, here we go. first tip I want to talk about is with regards to the uh, melody, and that is when the violins are playing the melody, I almost will always set the patch to not just legato, um, but legato with vibrato. Now, some of you may already be aware that this patch exists, and I think sometimes uh, Ava will actually generate a track using that patch, but if it hasn't already been selected by default, I must always select this patch. So if you go in to uh, strings, violins and you see you've got a selection of articulations that you can use and um, one of the variations of the, of the legato patch is this vibrato uh, patch now there's already a little bit of vibrato by default in the legato patch but the it's very much uh, accentuated in the uh, in the specific vibrato patch so if you select this I'm going to do it for both um, what's going to happen is it's going to give it a very uh, expressive feel more so than uh, usual, and I find that it's uh, it's it's very pleasing to use. So uh, that's the first thing that I always turn to. Um, and with the new update to the piano roll, it's very easy to simply change that articulation for the entire uh, track instead of having to uh, change it, you know, for every section like you might have had to do before. Second tip I want to talk about is the uh, tremolo patches for strings. So Something that I will frequently do to kind of add a little bit of energy to uh, whatever element that I'm going to add this patch to is I'm going to add uh, some sort of tremolo patch, whether it be uh, doubling the melody or doubling, you know, something like this ostinato that's happening. I find that it's um, kind of an interesting way to add a little more energy to these ostinato lines um, b by adding these sort of uh, tremolo patches. So. Um, I'm going to do it for the melody here and add another uh, instrument, go to strings, violas, and tremolo. And something you'll probably also want to do is uh, click here and do a dynamic offset um, by actually, let's say, minus 25, because what you want is, you want this to be a very subtle effect. You don't want it to uh, stand out and be too you know, upfront and, and uh, obnoxious. You want it to be a very subtle uh, thing that you hear in the background. So I'm gonna put a dynamic offset there, which is uh, effectively going to reduce the uh, MIDI CC values or velocity values, depending on the articulation, by 25 points. So uh, say if the velocity value is 70, um, applying this offset to that would bring it to 45. Something else I wanted to talk about for the third tip, which is not really relevant to this piece per se, um, but it is relevant if you're someone who uses the piano ensembles a lot, and I know a lot of you do, um, which is doubling the piano with some other sort of mallet or keyboard instrument to achieve kind of a different uh, texture. And so if you generate a piece, uh, this happens a lot, for example, with the strings and piano, ensemble, the uh, mallets and orchestra ensemble, you'll get the piano playing the melody. And um, what you can do 
to sort of varying effects is, for example, you can double that piano with the celeste, the uh, vibraphone, the marimba, glockenspiel. These will all kind of give you some different effects. Uh, so, for example, the celeste at the octave of the piano, uh, the vibraphone at the octave, um, the marimba, these will kind of round out the sound and create a kind of a warmer tone with the piano. Um, if you take the celeste, double it up an octave, if you double the piano with a glockenspiel, these will kind of give you uh, a brighter sound. So we definitely encourage you to experiment with that and see what you can come up with. And for those octave transpositions, um, just for those of you who don't know, this can now easily be done with this gear symbol. If you click on this, you can just pop that sucker up an octave, and there you go. Next thing I want to talk about is taking these melodies and doing little trade-offs with them between different instruments. And this is made much easier with the latest update to the piano roll, since now we can sort of drag these blocks around and have instruments play uh, only bits of the uh, melody or section at a time. So uh, I'll usually do this, for example, if the woodwinds or the brass are playing the melody, I like to trade off between instruments in that uh, instrument group, um, mainly because those are the instruments that actually need time to breathe. And by giving them little two measure sections here and there to do that uh, can be, um, you know, practical, really. Uh, and on top of that, you have the... Um, the added benefit of it sounding pretty good. You get a nice contrast between instruments uh, and it sort of helps move the piece along when you're, when you're trading off between these instruments. So in this case, we're not going to do it because our strings are on the melody and it'll sound quite nice and uh, string players don't really need to breathe. Uh, I mean, they do, but they can breathe and play at the same time. So, um, however, if we wanted to just demonstrate this very quickly, I will add a track of the flute, and I will add a track for the clarinet. And for example, what we could do is this, where, for example, the flute one will play these two measures, and then the next two measures will be played by the clarinet. And if we could switch to the pencil mode, we can just kind of do this and say, well, let's just continue that pattern. Um, and then, you know, we could even have them join up over here and say, okay, now the clarinet's going to continue and the flute's going to jump in and double it. Now, again, I don't really want to do that in this piece. This is a very aggressive piece, so no flutes or clarinets allowed. Um, but just an example of something new that you can do with this latest update of the piano roll that you couldn't do uh, before, which is kind of specify at the uh, level of the measure you know, what instruments can play what. Next thing I want to talk about is the drums. So by default, when you generate a piece of music that will have either drums or percussion, Ava will generate the percussion for the entire track from start to finish. Um, but if you want something like uh, a structure where the piece will start small and build up, you may not actually want that percussion to be there at the beginning anyway. And so with the same feature of just dragging the blocks around, we can delay the introduction of that percussion. And that's something that I will do frequently. I kind of like to uh, try to not, not start off a piece at full blast. I like to kind of try to preserve as much as I can um, to keep the, the, the piece moving along and, and have room to build. Now, another thing that I want to point out to you is uh, leading into sections, you will frequently have these kind of drum fills that are generated uh, of varying lengths. And it just so happens that in this case, the drum fill is about a measure long. And so rather than having the percussion start in this section, at the, at the very beginning of that section, what we can do is start the percussion a measure before so that we have that fill leading into the start of that section. And I think that'll be a, a pretty interesting effect. Another thing that I want to just point out quickly, uh, which is not really a part of this tip per se, but um, you can very easily switch between drum kits and also types of percussion altogether, and the drum part will actually kind of be translated uh, into those different drum kits and kind of maintain the same rhythm and uh, overall feeling. So, for example, here we just have a, a typical drum kit selected, but if we wanted to uh, switch it to something like Tycho's, uh, we can do that, and it will 
um, it will translate, I think, quite well. Uh, so if you get something generated with a drum kit and that's not what you wanted, uh, all is not lost. <laughs> you can uh, simply go here and, you know, if, if congas are what you're after, you can click congas and uh, that should sound pretty, pretty good on the congas too. I'm going to keep it on the drum kit though, no congas. Next up, I want to talk about the bass instruments in a similar way that we were discussing the percussion earlier, um, which is if you want to kind of start small and build up, which for this piece I do, um, it's best to preserve some of those lower instruments until later in the piece for uh, a more, you know, impactful uh, bass line. Okay, so in this case, we've got our, <laughs> we've got three tubas, um, simbasi, and three bass trombones hitting you right at the start. And that's a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is move all of those back here. Again, super easy to do with the new uh, colored block editing. Uh, and then I think what might be good is if we add some celli and also our string basses. Um, now what I'm going to do though is the string basses are going to come in at the A section so that in the beginning all we have is the celli. And actually, you know what? Let's bring in the basses halfway through the A section. So then what we've got is we've got room to expand the bass section lower. Um, and we're not starting off super low right away. If we kind of hold off on that, this downbeat, once the uh, percussion enters, uh, is going to be super impactful and it's going to... Um, it's going to rock, frankly. And finally, I want to mention this, given that we've recently added the synth ensemble to pop, and uh, as a result, we've added a lot of new synthesizers. Uh, something that I've liked to do lately is doubling the bass instruments with uh, a kind of subtle synthesizer. This can be um, pretty interesting when it comes to the more modern cinematic sound that you might be after. So, for example, if we add for the bass, uh, bass line, if we double that with, looking for a sign, here we go, a sign synth. This is something you might hear a lot in kind of modern cinematic scores. Um, we're gonna have that come in when those drums kick in. And that's again, gonna just add a uh, extra bit of oomph to the bass line. And actually what I think I'll do, I'm not sure if this is what I want or not, but let's pump that down an octave and also add a dynamic offset to that. We don't want it to be too obnoxious. And also, what the heck, if we go to the chords here in this ostinato, uh, let's add a synthesizer to that. Something like a plucky kind of synth. Oh look, synth plucked, that'll work. And have that start when the drums kick in, and also do a dynamic offset there. Uh, and so that's just going to add uh, some synthesizer sounds. It's going to give it a modern uh, take. And so there's something you can do now. There's lots of new synths to choose from. So if you didn't already know about that, now you know. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for these tips. Hope these were helpful to at least some of you. Uh, if there's something that you would like me to talk about, please let me know. I'd really like to try to make these videos uh, as useful and as helpful as possible. So... Uh, do let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any other suggestions that you'd like to give people for working with Ava, um, you can let us know that too. And thanks for watching.